to try and create change across all of those countries um, to share knowledge, um, you know, really around psychosocial risk assessments, what we've just been talking about right now. And part of that process is around having national level legislation um, to to encourage organizations, well, legislation means they have to, but if it's guidance, then to encourage organizations that they should do something um, about this. And there's a big question mark around, well, just because we have a national guidance or we have legislation on this, does it actually work? Does it translate to the ordinary person on, on the ground? Um, and we've been looking at some data over the last year. And what we see actually is that when, um, so what we've done is again, link different data sets. So we've got, um, well, simple questions. Do this, does a specific country have legislation or guidance at a national level that organizations should do something about that? We then have uh, um, a European-wide survey of um, organizations. There's almost 35,000 organizations across Europe that fill out this questionnaire and ask them questions around health and safety. And then we have a employee working condition survey, which is about 45,000 people who fill that out about their working conditions and about their well-being. So what we did was link those different data sets together. And, and what we find is that actually that national policies are associated with more organizations um, acknowledging that they do have um, organizational level policies to address um, stress. This is specifically focused on, on work-related stress, um, which then translates to employees reporting lower levels of, uh, sorry, higher levels of job resources um, and, then lower, and then lower levels of poor mental well-being. So that's the general picture. So that's quite cool because we're, we're able to demonstrate that, yes, when countries have those national level guidance, organizations do something about that. And it does translate to slightly better working conditions for individuals, which then translates to 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 better um, well-being outcomes for, for individuals. Um, when we explore that mechanism, actually, it goes via resources or so support in the workplace. It doesn't actually change the level of demands. So that was quite interesting. Um, and it may be kind of alluding to some of the discussions that we've had over here. That's quite difficult to change demands. And maybe for organizations, it's looking at how can we create more support. But this suggests to us that actually, yeah, organizations creating, focusing on support um, can have good outcomes for, for individuals.